Hey guys, and welcome to a new Don't Starve series. So, after the success of my last series and uh, failing in a pretty awful way, let's be honest here, I decided to come back to do a shipwrecked playthrough. And I'm going to be doing this alongside of the other kind of mini series I've got going for Don't Starve with the challenge discovery. I'm not sure I'm going to get a main playthrough out of that, but it's kind of fun just to look at the different aspects of Don't Starve under lenses and stuff. Kind of like the brawls in Hearthstone, in a way. But yeah, this is just me going back to my kind of everyday playthrough. As you know, it's fun to play through Don't Starve uh, without any changes. And I enjoy it. It also will help me with making my new guide, which I'm going to be doing soon, which a lot of people have asked for, which is quite obviously the shipwreck guide. I'm not entirely sure how long it's going to take because of many different reasons, which I'm not going to go into too much in depth. But yeah, this is just going to be a fun little everyday playthrough, as I usually would. I'm sure I'll find a gimmick somewhere along the way, like with the Reign of Giants while making a cave base, etc. So yeah, this should be pretty fun. And don't worry, I'm not doing a one island challenge again. We all know how that didn't go to plans. And looking at this island, it's actually a really small island as well. So even if I did want to, it might not have been a good idea. Alright, let's get to the basics. The thing is, for the shipwreck guide I'm going to be doing, most of the stuff is going to be similar to the Reign of Giants one. It's just the little different bits that are going to change, like sailing to find a good island, and how you set up for the other seasons, etc. I never really was too good with guides, but it turns out a lot of people liked it, so... Maybe I had a hidden talent there. No falling coconuts, that's nice to see. Right, so I think to try and get off the island as soon as possible. I forget which raft is faster. I get the feeling that it is this raft. I don't actually know. That's something I have to look into as well. But I'll just go with the generic wood raft that I usually go with. Probably take the first day up on this island and then head out. Chop down a few trees. hope for a little bit of extra food, but I guess it doesn't really matter too much. As long as I find an island with some food on it. And talking about stuff like that, I don't even have to find any gold. Because I can... Well, I mean, of course I have to find gold eventually, but... Not at the moment. For the time being, I could just sail about and uh, use all the recipes I have to my free will. Empty bottle, not too fond of. So yeah, setting up for the guide idea, this is another thing I should probably mention, is finding islands. So like, keep an eye on the colour of the ocean. So I guess, yeah, this is just like a fun playthrough it's also to keep an eye out for the little guide tips. I try not to let that stray too far from having fun. Oh and I should have probably mentioned I'm also playing Wickerbottom. One of the reasons is because I haven't really played the character much and it's quite fun for a quick progression in the early games. Right, it's taking me a while to find any land here. Oh, there we go. It's kind of hoping I'll find some eventually. And I will dock off on the island. Oh no. 
Please tell me it's not going to be a small one. Because it kind of looks like that's what it's setting up to be. I should probably mine a few rocks as well. Just in case I want to make a permanent base and I need uh, 12 normal rocks. Yeah. Ah, and this as well. That's probably a wise idea, just so I can actually carry everything. But yeah, this island kind of looks like one of the basic ones at the moment. But we will see. I'm going to make sure I'm prepared for night as well. Oh, am I really out of twigs? I kind of want to grab a few of those. And hopefully get prepared before the night comes. I'm still trying to think of other gimmicks for my other series as well. I was thinking of doing a tumbleweed one. Where you can only get grass and twigs from tumbleweed. And I think I'll actually find that one fun to play on my own. Like off camera I mean. Alright, is that it for this island? Not quite. There's still a bit left to discover. And I will need a light. Just to get through the short little gap I have. And I can't actually sail on the boat with a torch out, which is going to be annoying. I was also thinking about mods, so like how I said I like playing uh, just kind of vanilla Don't Starve without any mods or anything. I was uh, wondering whether to install little mods like the minimap, just so I can see a small version of the map at all times and it kind of feels... It doesn't really feel like it changes anything to the game, it's just a lot easier. I don't have to keep bringing the map up all the time and it adds a lot more to the visual experience. So you guys let me know if you think that's a good idea. And I'll add it because, to be honest, I'm kind of thinking about it myself. I did add it to Don't Starve uh, Together with a series I did a while ago. And it worked quite nicely on there, so it is very possible, to be honest. So I don't think just heading in one direction rather than a circle is going to matter too much because those two islands don't really have anything significant on them. I'll just sail the camera around a bit just to see which way the waves are facing. I don't tend to do that too much either. I know a lot of people kind of prefer it to get the camera moving all the time but it confuses me a lot. So I don't tend to do it. Here we go. There's a lot of muscles around here. Which is a good sign for a base, actually. A nice food supply. I did have that trouble in uh, my first shipwreck playthrough. Uh, back in my Wolfgang days. If any of you are around for there. Well, let's just see the real OGs, because that was quite a while ago. Uh, dark flowers. Ah, okay. Where's my axe? Here we go. In fact, now I was thinking about um, the original viewers of my channel. If you remember my first ever Don't Starve series, which... To be quite honest, there wasn't a lot of people... Ooh, doy doys. There wasn't a lot of people who watched it back then. But yeah, the people who did, you will be the real OGs. 
I don't know I keep using that phrase just willy-nilly. I don't even know where I've picked up on that from. Is this as small of an island as I think it is? Um... I mean, even if it is, it's not too bad, because I want to make sure the doi doi is safe, uh, safe enough for when I can make the farm. And hopefully make a proper one this time. Are we, uh... Wait, who did I even play last time? I'm trying to think which character it was. It was Wally, wasn't it? Yeah, that was before all the updates for Shipwreck were out as well. In my Wally playthrough. I did like Wally, but the changes they made to him made him a confusing character to play because you had to remember all the different recipe guides, etc. And I wasn't too good at remembering them all. Right, this is an island I need to remember. I wish there was a minimap marker tag uh, thing as well. And if there's a mod for that, I might look into getting one of those as well. So really, all I'm kind of doing now is just sailing around to find an island that has the decent qualities of an island you want to live at, I guess, is the best way to phrase it. As I remember in my past few playthroughs, it's best to find an island that has at least three different biomes on it. And preferably one of those being a rock biome or magma biome, I don't really know the correct phrasing for it because then you can actually get rocks without having to sail off anywhere the grassy plains biome is nice as well because then you get sweet potatoes which uh, you have to pick up instantly which I know a lot of people do similar with like the carrot situation Sticking to the waves is wise as well. If you guys are wondering why I keep mentioning this kind of stuff, it's probably because I'm going to come back and check over these videos when it comes time to start recording for the guide and stuff, because then I'll, uh, I'll know my tips. Okay. Go against the deep water. And try and sail down... Here we go. That isn't one I've already found, which is good news. I was hoping it wouldn't be, and they didn't just go around in one big circle. And it's a jungle one. I think every island has a jungle on it. I mean, most of the time that seems to be what I've found. Spiders up there. Which is actually a good sign for an island. These guys, not so much. They irritate the hell out of me. I'm not going to mine that just yet because of the monkeys being nearby. I could mine this one. There we go. And I will head around and have a look uh, at the rest of the island. Hopefully it's not got too many of uh, the primates on it. If it's just got one primate bundle, that's actually really good. As long as you have at least one on the island, it doesn't really have to uh, be more than one, because they can get slightly overwhelming. This is a nice sign. It's not the best sign, but it's a nice one. At least I know I'll have some decent things nearby. And then I'll cook up all the stuff that would otherwise drain my sanity, just so I can eat it out on the run. I don't have to cook up the berries though, because they have a quicker decay time. And even though I'm not playing Wally, I'm still going to keep everything in my uh, backpack, food-wise. Just so it's easier to know where everything is. Kind of want to move everything around a bit. For the same reason. But finding a base is probably going to be a wise idea. At least I don't 
really like surviving too long out in the wild on shipwrecks without having a base already. Because it feels a lot more dangerous just because of you having to trek to other islands and stuff. I'm going to keep some jungle seeds just so I have some in case my island doesn't have any. Which is probably another tip for the guide as well. But yeah, surviving the first few days I guess isn't too difficult just as long as you know what you're doing. Uh, I can already make an endothermic fire. I'm just looking to see if there's anything that Wickerbottom can already learn just because it's not like a usual playthrough where you already know recipes to all of this stuff so it's slightly more... I uh, should probably make one of those. That was a mistake I made actually. Now I think about it. I didn't make those when I was chopping down trees earlier. I missed out on uh, slight bits of wood. I could even skip Science Machine and go straight onto Alchemy Engine. Because Science Machine unlocks Alchemy Engine stuff, but what does Alchemy Engine stuff unlock? Does that unlock the Pahatinator? Or I just call it Pahatinator because it's a lot easier. Well, it's the pirate one in this, isn't it? I don't know, this island is decent, but I'd prefer one that has two of the biomes I mentioned earlier on. There's bees. Uh, I guess I'll go and grab this. I know it's a little bit out of my way, but... It's probably a good idea. haven't seen any... Water buffaloes, beefaloes out here. It kind of lowers the land value a bit. <laughs> it's like buying a property. You know? Oh, Mr. Piggy. Another empty bottle. The pig's a good sign. So, out of all the islands I've discovered so far, this is probably the best one to settle on because it has a bit of everything. It has a bit of everything but not in the biome sense which is kind of more geared to what I'm looking for. Right, from here I should probably head down or at least I'll go and check which way the waves are heading first. They're heading up. Ooh. I guess I could go up. It's just the complete opposite direction to what I was planning on heading. It is technically where I came from. I have to go through the deep ocean. It isn't too bad. The boat's in decent shape. I have a torch and the stuff to build another one. Prime Oceanic Oscillations. Now I think about it, Wickerbottom doesn't have too many redeeming factors, apart from her sanity is insane. Not that it really bothered me before, I mean, he had uh, characters with really low sanity and it wasn't like it was uh, giving me shadow monsters all the time. I did like my Weber playthrough. The thing is, the green mushrooms are just really powerful in this respect. 150 health and I think 150 hunger, which isn't the best. I guess just the lower quantity makes me uh, need to make sure I have more food on me at all times. Here's another shallower water. Now I just need to get to the even shallower water. Here we are. And hopefully this island has got at least some rock or like any other biome to be honest. I'd be happy. Wait, aren't the only... Well, there's three biomes, I guess. Ooh. Have I found... I have found the exit. Okay. Not exactly what I planned to find around here. Let me just do some mining while I'm here. Okay. 
The sky is falling and I'm just mining some coral. As you do. He fires near me instead of on me just so he gets me as I'm moving rather than as I'm stationary. It's an interesting fact to note as well. I did make a lot of smaller guides for Shipwrecked, which kind of takes away from the whole idea of making one big guide, but I think it'll be fine. She hates spoiled food as well, that's uh, something I should keep in mind. But that did fill up like a hunger bar like crazy. I think everybody hates spoiled food, isn't that like a given? Oh, there is an island here. I wasn't too sure. I don't quite remember whether it was usually off the coast of an island. Oh, this looks like a trap. But do I trust it? I get the feeling that in the center there's going to be a snake bush. No? Not so far, at least. I'm liking this island. Didn't actually mean to pick that up. And that maybe wasn't the best decision either. But yeah, I'm actually really liking this island so far. I get the feeling it is one of those ones that has loads of food but also has a danger. So you get rewarded for removing the danger. By the looks of this, it's uh, snake bushes and spider dens. I don't see many monkeys. That would be irritating if there was loads of berry bushes but also loads of monkeys. Because they would just take them all the time. So yeah, this in land value might be a bit more worth it than the other island. Just because of the sheer amount of food here. I'll leave the rest of the stuff. I want to make sure that there's at least one more biome attached to this. Because if not, it's just too bland, to be honest. And that would mean I'd have to bring everything else over. But a big island isn't the worst. I can always make my own kind of areas on it. My own little districts. It's going to be dark soon as well, which isn't the best. I'll knock this one down as well. How big is this? Oh my god, that's a pretty big island so far. That was scary. When that, when that bird flew past my screen. I just need to be a bit careful because of my uh, undiscovered land around here. Oh, there goes the old spider snake gang fights. I feel like I'll be coming back round to my boat in a sec. It's a hard decision whether to build my base here. Because as I said, it's good in some respects, but lacking in others. You know, I might just have to, to be honest. I think it's too much of a good island to, like, give up. Alright then, where would I build it? I think that if I was to have this as my base, I would have to have these two islands kind of interlinked. Um, probably have this as the doi doi land over there, and possibly build my base down here then. So, I don't think the log raft's important anymore, it's not like I need to gather items between now and then to make my base any better. But it is one damn huge base. Maybe there's something in the center. Something I didn't really think about, and yes there is. 
Um, technically, this is a good thing. I mean, it's not a bad thing. There isn't too many threats here, and as soon as I've removed the threats, then it's a good thing. Yeah, sure. It's fine. It's really not a problem. And build the base... Uh, here. Here's fine, I think. Oh, and then you just go up a bit and there's more swamp. Um... Yeah, it's not the worst. I've seen, I've seen worst areas. Worst? Wow, I can't even speak English anymore. <laughs> I've seen worse areas. I kind of want gears so that I can make an icebox. Oh, come on. Give me a break. Alright, there we go. And gears for an icebox. Ah, I need a science machine. I could do with getting a bit more wood for the Majiga. I have a lot of stuff to sort out. It's always fun starting off a new, uh, don't start for what I'd say. Because part of the fun is making the base as well. And figuring out what exactly it is you're going to have at your base and everything else. I don't know, I just really enjoy that part. Uh, I almost have enough wood. I presume I have enough of uh, the rock side of stuffs. And I should probably go and dig up some poisonous holes in a sec as well. Okay, let me just go and do one now. Oh, I really did that? Oh. Um. Okay. <laughs> not what I expected. There is a reduced cooldown on this now, now if I'm not mistaken. So hopefully I'm not gonna just uh, straight up die. Anti-venom. Let me have a look. So those pop off more often, which is irritating. I don't really need that. I would prefer if I had space for this item. Hold on. There we go, anti-venom. Now all I need is uh, the other stuff. The seaweed. But there's damn monkeys nearby, which is uh, not fun. Look at this. Uh oh, that's why. I wonder why there was a dead butterfly. I can use it to heal myself up after I uh, lose some. It's not too much of a big deal, to be honest. Uh, rowboat. Damn it, I'm gonna need a few more slots free here. And the monkeys aren't helping. Uh, if I cook these up, I'm gonna make some boards. I think I can just eat the next one without it being too much of a problem here. And now I need a machete. Well, I keep needing more spaces, don't I? Um, Snakeskin, sure. You can have that, monkeys. Oh, these monkeys are going to be a pain in my ass. I can already tell. But as soon as I have this seaweed, I think I'm fine. As far as I remember, it only lasts for a day. So it's not as devastating as it used to be, which, well, was devastating. As soon as you were poisoned, you were an antidote or you lost the game. Which I guess is Don't Starve style of uh, game, so it's not the worst, really. 
Where would I get some seaweed? I'm not sure even if I do get the antidote, if I'm going to use it now on myself or just uh, wait until this one wears off. I don't really remember what section of the day it was that I got poisoned on either, which would be a nice thing to know. But yeah, what a great way to start off this series, huh? <laughs> Getting poisoned by a, a change I didn't realize was the case. I seriously thought I'd be able to run in and get it before it popped off again just because of the delay. But delayed changes. The change in the delay got me this time. I wonder what that was then. I look like a hat floating in the water. And if I have a sail then I can hold light so probably a sail might be my next big aim to get. Because I know that as soon as I have one of those, I'll be more or less safe going out on the ocean. I was hoping for a bit more seaweed before I had to head back, but... I'm just hoping I don't have to land on this island before night time comes, which I might very well have to. Just depends how far over this island is, or I'm just sitting on my boat with a torch for the whole night time. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You can make it. Well, I don't know why it wouldn't let me equip it then. That was uh, close. But yeah, I'm gonna, just going to see how long this poison lasts for. And if it is the same as before. And if it is, I'll take the anti-venom. If not, I'll just save it for a better time. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. Thanks in advance, and I'll speak to you all next time.